All right, welcome everyone to Work for Avocados, a channel all about surfing, skating, and being soaked on the small stuff. This week we have a very special guest. He is putting on an awesome contest that I'm going to be judging alongside of him. Welcome, Mark the Landlock Surfer. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, I know it's taken a few weeks for us to get the troubleshooting down on my end and whatnot, so I appreciate you being patient with me. No worries. It's great to be here, and I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, it's nice that I got to have a test run uh, with the bad <laughs> audio version. We got all the kinks worked out the first time. So when like, people ask about your YouTube channel, like, how do you typically describe yourself? Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of started just because, you know, I live far away from the ocean and I'm addicted to surfing. So basically my brain always has a piece of me that's thinking about how can I try and get a surfing fix. So for the longest time, you know, I was doing that through snowboarding or power surfing or learning to river surf. And um, there's like an indoor wave kind of pool thing in Montreal nearby us. So it was mainly a lot of that. And then recording, like I used to do trip videos when we would do surf trips and that. So it started off not really intending it to be anything. And it just kind of became something when, when I started doing um, reviews on Surfscape products and all of a sudden, you know, it was getting more than 50 views of my travel videos and that, and it started to grow into what it is today, which, you know, a lot of mainly surf skating stuff. So reviews and trick tutorials and just some cool skate films, the, the type that I liked watching, but surf skate focused. So. Absolutely. And you, you just passed uh, 5,000 subscribers recently, wasn't it? Like just last week? Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, yeah. That's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. I know that's a, that's a huge achievement, and I know that takes a lot of work in putting editing videos, and especially the surf skate films that you've done. Uh, Mark's done a lot of really cool film edits where he makes full-on almost mini movies of his adventures in surf skating. It's a really cool thing to watch. You guys should definitely check that out. Uh, where was the last one you just went to? I was in the Azores, so the the islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, part of Portugal. And uh, yeah, it was supposed to be our first surf trip after two years of, of lockdowns and being stuck here uh, with the pandemic. Um, but uh, the surf conditions didn't really work out. Um, being someone who lives far away from the ocean, you know, the, the 16 foot bombs that not even the locals were paddling out for weren't really <laughs> going to be something I was going to risk my life for. But uh, the nice thing about surf skating is that we brought along the surf skates and I would have been bummed if it had been any other trip before I discovered surf skating. And instead it was like, ah, we'll go find some cool places to surf skate and that kind of salvage things. So, you know, there was one day I went out that was... It, it was weird. It was kind of like either too small, like it was completely flat or you'd have these huge bomb days. I went out on one day that was a little bit too big. I got one wave so I could say I surfed. And, uh, and then I got out of there uh, after getting a triple wave hold down <laughs> and called it a, called it a wrap. Yeah. Well, you chalk it up as a W. You got the wave, man. To go from like not having any waves at all to like too many waves or too much of a wave. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting problem to have, but that's awesome. You're able to make the most of it. That that's something really cool. That's something I admire about your surf skating is any conditions that you're in, you're really able to make the most of it. Even if it's something a super technical area or just a bank or something, you always seem to find a really awesome way to have fun with what you do. Yeah, thanks, man. It's kind of the nice thing about growing up in a city that's kind of boring for terrain, is you know you learn to make do with what you have and find ways to use it. And it helps kind of build some of the creativity, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for you guys who haven't seen Mark's videos before, one thing that's really unique about his specific style of surf skating is that he's a very technical, very creative surf skater. You know, his slides are awesome. He can do airs and whatnot. He also does crazy kick flips and grinds, um, and he really pushes the technical aspect of surf skating. So it's kind of like a niche inside of a niche. And as someone who can barely ollie, it, it's a really cool thing to watch. And speaking of which, that actually brings us to one of the main topics of the video that we're doing today is that you're putting on the contest in honor of getting 5,000 subscribers, right? That's right. Yeah. Like, you know, I've been pretty fortunate with uh, what I've been able to do with, with my surf skating. And um, 
I've had some companies who have who've sent me boards to review and um, another um, reviewer who, who has sent me some boards and that. So I kind of wanted to like give someone a surf skate. Um, the only problem was with the way that I ride, all of mine are in horrible shape and it would not be a good gift if I gave them. Um, if you saw some of the pictures I posted of what my trucks look like on my, my yacht that I took to the Azores. Um, but I thought I had a really creative idea with this idea of, of creating a contest that could come up with, that would be focused around kind of what I'm about, which is creativity either in terrain or in how you ride or in tricks you can do. And uh, so I reached out to um, to Your Own Wave, Yao Surf, and told them about the idea and they were pretty cool with it. And so they offered to to supply a brand new Yao Stappers skate as a, as a prize. So you won't be getting mine that is just hanging by a thread right now. Some razor tail that'll um, cut your yeah, ankle so off. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a cool idea to kind of, you know, build some, see what other creativity other people can come up with and, and get inspired by that. Definitely. I'm really excited to be a part of it. So uh, for people who want to enter and are just seeing this on my own channel, what are, how do they enter? What are the rules? How is that all going down? Yeah, so all the rules are posted. Um, there's a video on my channel and in the description, I've posted the rules there. Um, but the gist of it is the key thing we're looking for is creativity. So doing something that's unique, um, something that's interesting. Um, execution still counts. So, you know, if two people submit the same creative trick, then the one who performs it better is going to get an edge. Um, and yeah, it's basically needs to be done on a surf skate. We want to see some application of the surf skate. So don't just, you know, kick push into a board slide, um, integrate some surf carves into your lines. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Other than that, you know, you can submit up to three different clips. It can be either a single trip, single trick or a line. Um, that's your call. Um, but yeah, just show us something that's unique and creative and have the chance to be crowned the most creative surf skater of 2022 brand new title it's a, it's a heavy claim and that started it started today right the contest officially started today yeah. so today was the first day um and you got two weeks to submit your clips so you can do that by posting them as uh as either a post or a reel on instagram and using the hashtag unconventional contest and yeah perfect and uh your youtube is mark the landlock surfer for that and i'll put it right and i'll put the put that in the description as well as a link to the video explaining the rules for you guys as well. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that I'm, I'm really honored that Michael has uh, agreed to, to be a, a judge in this contest. Cause I think he would stand a really good chance of winning otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's just someone else who I, I know you think kind of uniquely, you do some tricks that I haven't seen anyone else do on a surf skate, which are, are really kind of, you know, help push me and what I was able to do. So it was, it's going to be great to, to work with you and looking at the different entries we receive. And, uh, and also maybe we should mention our own little side contest. Yeah. Speaking of pushing each other, we, uh, Mark and I have our own contest. We have a, a friendly rivalry going on, uh, aside from his success in his own channel, pushing me to do my own channel more consistently and frequently, uh, as a side kind of, end note to the contest we are doing a we decided is it we doing a trick or a line or it's up to our discretion on that yeah either way so we're going to do a, a best trick slash line uh we're both going to submit a clip we're going to find some site where you guys can all vote on it and the person who doesn't win has to wear the other person's youtube channel t-shirt on their next video which i'm super excited about it's uh, it's really pushing yeah. me to come up with some really so, yeah i'm worried michael because black isn't really your color but you know <laughs> you might want to start practicing oh man especially with the florida heat right now man i will be sweating 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 but uh, I'm super stoked about it because it's been, dude, for weeks now, I've just been like, man, what is the trick I'm going to do? What is the trick I'm going to do? I'll be hanging out with my girlfriend. She's like, what are you even thinking about? I'm like, I got I to gotta come up with something. I was like, he did the landslide. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> it's so fun to have something like that to push us, though, because otherwise, you know, I find you can kind of settle into just doing the same lines, same tricks over and over again. And really, I've been watching like old, 
Bones Brigade videos and stuff and hearing Rodney Mullen talk about inventing tricks and it's really inspiring too. So yeah, just kind of nice to see some of that in surf skating, I think. For sure. I think we're in a really cool revolu- uh, revolution period in surf skating right now. You know, it's it's gained enough popularity where there's a solid base of people who are ready to move on from just the slides and whatnot and still incorporate that into their riding, but also seeing what kind of hybrid lines can be done. Um, I think that's one of the great things about surf skating is that the pumping ability to like generate speed and keep that line moving or to like smoothly carve into more of these technical tricks is a really unique aspect to the sport that's growing right now. And that's the thing, right? As I started with learning how to carve, learning how to pump, learning how to get smooth surfy lines. And just after a while, I was like, well, you know, I was carrying around a skateboard and a surfboard and bringing both to the park. And I was like, well, I wonder if I can start doing skate tricks on my surf skate. And once I figured out that it worked, it was just kind of a challenge. Like, you know, instead of bringing two boards around, let's just learn to do everything on one. And then I figured out, you know, you could do kind of like longboard kind of stuff on it too. It's it's really the all-terrain vehicle that I found that, you know, I think there's going to be a point where right now there's kind of like a, a really big um, skew towards beginners and surf skating. So people are still content to learn the basics and the fundamentals and doing cone drills and parking lots. But once people start advancing and getting to that intermediate and advanced stage, that's when I think we're going to start to see a lot more of a push to trying to, you know, push the boundaries of the sport and see where it can go. And I love that it's like backed in surfing and surfy lines on that, but we have to remember that we're not limited to what you can do on a wave with our surf skates. So it really opens up a whole world of possibilities. Definitely. It's, it's, you know, it's taking the best of both worlds and almost creating a, a third thing in itself. You know, you got the, the weight, the flowiness of the surf skate and you have the traditional skateboarding and we're trying to combine them together. And I don't want to say create a whole new sport, but kind of look at things from a different perspective of what's possible. You know, it's almost like, how BMXers can get around in a park. It's like they can do lines that a lot of people can't because they have the ability to keep pedaling and generate speed and keep things going. And I I think that's one of the things that I love about surf skating the most. Yeah, we're uh, we're starting slowly to build a little bit of a community here in Ottawa. So organizing weekly get togethers at my local skate park. And we had um, five of us out last time. And, uh, you know, I could see us getting annoying because we're able to keep on going forever. We don't have to stop and kick push in the middle. It's like taking over. We're the new scooter kids. I was just, yeah. <laughs> well, at least there's a group of you now. I, I remember when I first started, like, surf skating, I was, like, the only guy. And people would just stand up, and, like, waiting, be like, is this guy done yet? And I was the only one that had finished. And I'd be like, yeah, I just did a sick line. Everyone's like, whatever, dude, get out of the way. So it's cool that you have like a group forming now. And that is one thing I've noticed about surf skating a lot lately is that there's a lot more people at the park. Usually like whenever I go now, there's, you know, it might be just a family or something. It could be like an older guy. It could be a younger girl on one, but a lot of people are starting to embrace it now, uh, which is a really nice thing to see. Yeah, for sure. It's not quite there at, at my local yet, but if they don't see other surf skaters, they recognize me since I'm there so often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of your local park, man, your local park looks sick. I, I was like revisiting your videos and just you have like, seems like you have the perfect setup there for surf skating. It is honestly just such a blessing. Like, I mean, you, you know me well enough to know that I'm a guy who tries to see the positives in things and try to see the glass half full. But like, I'm just now appreciating how lucky I am to be in Ottawa, like as a landlocked surfer, you know, we've got a river wave, so I can still get a surfing fix and ride right away for a few months of the year. We've got that amazing park that was built, you know, more than 20 years ago. And it just, for whatever reason, the way they designed it, it's unlike any other park in Ottawa that just has great lines for a surf skate. Like none of our other parks have any kind of flow to them. But this old park that's, you know, kind of falling apart uh, in the concrete, there's a few uh, patchy sections you got to watch out for, just is designed perfectly for surf skates. So yeah, pretty fortunate uh, to be here in Ottawa with 
with those opportunities. Definitely. I mean, that's kind of how we talked about earlier. It's like everything seems to come full circle. It's like a lot of the, these older parks we're finding out are pretty ideal for surf skating conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like some of those snake runs near you. Like, yeah. Like incredible. <laughs> Definitely. I saw one that, um, it's, I want to say his name's John Bishop. Do you follow him on YouTube? Mm-hmm. I love his videos, but he was on one, uh, he was revisiting some park that was like 25, 30 years old or something like that. And by traditional means, it would not look like a fun park, but he was on a surf skate pumping down it and it was pretty interesting to see his take on it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like my videos from the Azores, like explore and discover, it's not a skate spot. It's not a, a place for skateboarding because everything is so rough and ragged like most of the city streets are cobblestone and then you've got some really rough areas but the surf skate can handle that and it just opens up opportunities that you wouldn't really have on a a standard popsicle board with small wheels so um it's part of why i love surf skating it's just so versatile you get to explore the environment in like a whole different way and you guys you and your you and your wife got some pretty crazy shots of uh of that experience they were super cinematic it looked like a surf trip in itself you know yeah it's a beautiful place and and part of the fun is just you know exploring like i do a lot of planning beforehand just checking on google maps and looking at, at the satellite views of oh that spot could be interesting and it looks like a bank there and yeah it's it's half the fun for me is kind of the anticipation and trying to find those good spots do you just go off of like street like street view and just looking at it? Or are you able to like look at the terrain, use like some tools to like actually see the terrain change and like elevation? Yeah, I like I take in take all of that into consideration. I mean, there's certain spots where you think there's more likely to be something interesting where you can focus. Like I looked a lot at the marinas that were along because I know they're gonna be paved, they're gonna have some interesting terrain. Usually they have ramps that go towards the water to move boats around in that um at cities at kind of downtown areas and then just kind of spots that just look interesting so like that that treed road um you know the the road that went up to the volcano it's just anything that looks like it might be a little bit interesting or that it might have some texture some diversity um some um some relief that that kind of thing is where i kind of hone in on and then and then explore using street view from there nice yeah you've made some pretty incredible discoveries uh as i mentioned in the last video i won't ask you where it is but uh we'll do an overlay clip and i'm also going to link it in the description below but mark found a skatable mountain which i'm still every time i look at that i'm just like in shock of that how you found that but that that was like the the gold treasure that i've ever seen you must have been pretty stoked to find that one yeah that was that was pretty cool um so i'll i'll be honest that it wasn't just randomly stumbling across that i saw uh, a picture of someone using a regular skateboard on there Mm -hmm. and then i made it my mission because i'm like if someone can skate that with a regular skateboard it's going to be 10 times better on a surf skate and using all my skills <laughs> of, uh, of exploring and trying to figure out where that could be using my geology <laughs> background, um, I managed to track it down. And, uh, and it was just, you know, we, we drove there not really knowing if it was the place. And then when you got there and see it in person, it was just phenomenal. That's awesome. Was that, uh, did you have to use the shark wheels for that one or were you able to get by on on normal wheels? I was using regular wheels for that. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot more challenging spot to ride than it looks in my videos. Um, there's little dips and stuff that you can't really see. So you really have to like get the shock absorbers and your legs going because, um, it's almost like there's little ditches there that are, are not intelligible to the naked eye, but when mm. you're riding, you just have to stay loose. So, you know, it's easy to like look at it and say, well, why didn't you go higher on that wall? It's because even though it looks like a perfect quarter pipe, it's actually like this and then dipped in and then ah. like overhanging. Yeah. From the angle. So, yeah. From the angle, it'd be hard to see that. I imagine it, it, it looks better than it is, but it's still incredible. Yeah. I mean, just a day in the mountains skating, that's that's a pretty awesome experience in itself, I'm yeah. sure. And just to go out the whole day and not see another soul is pretty fun, too. Yeah. Dude, I've been trying to get a mountain fix lately. From Florida, we don't have any of that. So 
I'm trying to Not incorporate really a little thing, bit more of but, that. But, you know, life. you do get to surf multiple times a week. So. That is true. I actually got out this week when I've had my first good day in like a couple of weeks. So I was very fortunate to have that. Um, speaking of like wheels and setups and stuff like that, you've done a lot of different reviews on boards. And what do you look for when you're looking for your setups? I know you and I joke about the hyper specifics that the surf skate culture can get into, but on your own, like, what do you look for when you're looking to set up a board? Yeah. So I've, I've done lots of experimentation (laughs) and I'm slowly starting to realize what I like. And I think, you know, wheelbase is, is one of the most limiting factors for just buying boards off the shelf. Um, with some trial and error, I've realized, you know, with different truck systems, I can get away with different, different wheelbases. I can go shorter with like a CX style or C5. Um, but if I want to use like a spring base system, I need about 17 inch wheelbase. Um, but I like to have really heavy concave, like deep concave, because I like doing big, um, you know, big slides, bird slides and laybacks on, on vert, like at that indoor park we have here. Um, and that is a situation where it's really easy for the board to slide away from you. So often I'm just kind of hanging on by my toenails on vert, um, to the concave on the board. So that's an important factor to me. I like to have a nose and a tail that are usable because I like to do unconventional stuff. So working in like, you know, sloppy nose slides and crooked grinds and ollies and that, and just having like that kick nose up front is really important for that. So um, it's something that I tend to try to look for on my boards. And like a lot of the new Yao boards do have that, which I think is a really good progressive move. Uh, I was looking at the new Carver lineup and and it's really difficult to find. Like they have the sun rays that come set up with their C5s, but I think I actually prefer the C, CX or the C7 on Carvers. And they don't have any models that come stock with like a usable nose. So, um, but yeah, there's, so those are kind of the key things in terms of a deck. Um, yeah, like I vary in terms of like what kind of truck system I like to use. Like there's different ones I like in certain applications. So uh, I'm actually looking into that that click system, the one that lets you kind of quick release. I saw your... that one. That thing is crazy. That was like perfect. Yeah. I was, we were one of the it's people really I thought cool. of when it's, I saw it's that. It's quite expensive. So I'm not sure if I'm ready to, <laughs> to lay out the money for one yet. But with another uh, trip coming up, it might be handy to be able to just bring on a few sets of trucks and wheels and, and one deck. So. For sure. Looking into that. And then, like, as far as wheels, like, what do you, is there, like, a durometer you try to stick around? <sighs> I'm still looking for my Cinderella wheel. Um, there's a few that I like, um, a few that I dislike, but my pet peeve is <laughs> when I post a video of a slider or something <laughs> and someone asks, and well, okay, now someone asks, a dozen people ask, what wheels are you using? <laughs> They're like, it's not the wheels, it's the practice and the technique. <laughs> so I've actually just, um, I haven't posted it yet, but I have a video that I think is really going to help explain the concept of how you can slide on any wheels in any terrain by using the right technique. So Perfect. I'm looking forward to that one. People, people will stop asking me, <laughs> what wheels do you need to do that? <laughs> I imagine it's like golfing. Like if people are like, I, I need to get the newest set of clubs and that'll be the one thing yes. that's going to fix everything, you know? And you know what? I actually caught myself doing that <laughs> when it comes to surfing and I slapped myself on the wrist because uh, I'm, we had a good season for river surfing this year. So I actually was able to get out on a regular basis. You know, some years we don't have a lot of spring runoff. So you get, you know, maybe a week or two weeks where the waves are uh, breaking um, this week we we got le- or this year we got lucky because it's been about six weeks where we've had a rideable wave. Um, so I've actually been able to progress my carving and and that. And you know, I I said to someone who's a very experienced river surfer, like, yeah, I need to get a board that's leaner so I can carve a bit better. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, technique is more important. <laughs> it will turn faster, but you got to get the, of like, oh man, I just did what everybody does. You just threw the mirror at you. <laughs> yeah. It happens to all of us. 
So it just proves that, you know, I'm not immune to, <laughs> to trying to find shortcuts. Yeah, it's, it's just a practice in ourselves and bettering our own views on things. Dude, I'm really looking forward to this contest. I'm going to have some overlays of, uh, of your skating on this, and I'll definitely link, link down below. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Anything else that you want to mention about anything you got going on or anything else you got coming out video-wise? Uh, not really. Um, I might look into doing another travel um, exploration style video like I did in the Azores. We have uh, some travel to Maui coming up at the end oh, of the summer. Dude. So I'm already mapping out all the great ditches they have there. <laughs> so That's right. We um, talked about that last time. Uh, you're meeting up with Ratty Daddy, right? You, yeah, you know? we're going to see. Like he's on, he's on Oahu, so it just kind of depends if I can – find a decent flight to, to get over there because i would really love to go skate the wallows yeah <laughs> classic spot but um there's there's enough in maui that would probably tie me over so yeah we'll see nice man i'm looking forward to that one i'm sure you're gonna get some crazy cinematic shots and i'm sure you'll be able to combine some good surfing shots with that one too i'm sure you'll score yeah, well on looking that. forward to, to getting some waves uh, too definitely well, guys, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to Mark's channel. I'll have a link and a button at the end of the video. Mark, thanks so much for being patient with us, getting this whole video together. Thanks for allowing me to be part of this contest. And I'm going to try my best in the next year or so to get up there, and maybe we'll skate together one day. Sure hope so. Come down in the spring, and we'll get you out on the 